Hi everybody. Well, some good news for you today for story time. I thought we only had two stories left, but actually we have three. So this is now the penultimate story. Um, so the good news is there's some more to come. And today's story is called The Forson. I looked at myself in the long mirror. Fantastic. Yep, those new trousers were definitely it. 16 inch bottoms and no turn up. Boy, I couldn't wait for Barry to see them. Mind you, I'd wanted 15 inch bottoms, but there was no chance of that with my mum. She thinks anybody who wears drain pipes will end up in an approved school. A teddy boy, that's how you'll end up. It'll be velvet collars and long jackets next, and then those thick crepe shoes. I know. Blimey, just because one of my mates had ended up in a teddy boy gang. I had teddy boys morning, noon and night. Just watch, any second now she'll come out with the Borstal line. You'll end up in Borstal, that's what'll happen. Don't you? Don't be daft, Mum. And don't you talk to me like that. You're still not up too old for a quick slap. So that's how it was. 16 inch bottoms was the best I could do. But I knew there'd be more trouble when I brought the trousers home and there were no turn ups. I was right. But they're not finished. Where's the turn ups? There are no turn ups. I can see that. Where are they? Turn ups are out, they're old fashioned. This is the new style. Seeing as I brought the trousers out of my own money that I'd saved from my newspaper round, there wasn't much mum could do about it. Well, you big Jessie. And that's all she said. But still, they did look great. I tilted the mirror forward a bit more so I could see how the tapered bottoms rested on my shoes. Terrific. I was beginning to feel a bit nervous. This was the first date I'd ever had. The first proper date. Well, actually, it was a foursome. Barry had arranged it. He'd been on a couple of dates before, so he was quite experienced. And we'd met these two girls at our school into social. We had one every Christmas with the girls' school nearby. It was the big event of the year because it's the only time our school had anything to do with the girls' school. In fact, for a week before the intersocial, we had dancing lessons in the main hall every lunchtime. You should have seen us. All the boys trying to learn to dance together. I partnered Barry. We took it in turns to be the girl. By the end of the week, I could do a slow waltz. At the intersocial, Barry had danced most of the time with this girl called Kath, and he'd asked her out the following Saturday, and she'd already arranged to go with her best friend Valerie, and that's how the foursome was arranged. Barry and Kath and me and Valerie. I had one dance with Valerie so we sort of knew each other. She wasn't bad looking at all. In fact, going by standards in the girls school, she was quite pretty. Now which tie should I put on? My Slim Jim or the fancy paisley one that I got from my Auntie Doreen for digging the garden? I think the Slim Jim. Yeah, Jim's the him. I look great in that, as long as mum doesn't see. To her, Slim Jim ties and bicycle chains go together. Now how do you do a Windsor? Across, under, across again. Oh, I haven't got enough tie left now. Across, under, under again, back across, and you get a big fat mess. Right, once more. And if I don't get it right this time, I'm not going. Across, under, under again, back across, and third time, look here, a perfect Windsor knot. And just enough, left over to tuck into my trousers. I like looking in the mirror. My spots didn't look too bad. Who are you kidding? You look like the before bloke in the acne advert. Oh, how is it that you always look your worst when it matters the most? Ah well, Valerie knows what I look like. My collar didn't look too bad considering I had to use matchsticks instead of whalebones. I'd been thinking about this date all week. Now I kept wondering whether to go out or not. Well, of course, I wanted to go. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Mind you, I hadn't let on to Barry I was keen. I made out I was doing him a favour when he asked me. Look, Kath will only go out with me if you'll take a friend. Go on, take her out. She's not bad looking, you know. I didn't have to think twice. I liked her. Oh, I don't know, Barry. I'm not right keen. Oh, well, if you're not, I suppose I'll have to ask Norbert Lightowler. All right then, Barry, but only because you're my best friend. You are a good lad. I'll fix it up then. And he arranged to meet them outside the Odeon at quarter to eight. And now for a touch of aftershave. 
Not that I had anything to shave. I only used this stuff once before when I went to meet our Maureen's birthday party. Maureen's my cousin. That w was a waste of time and all. The oldest girl there was only 13 and that was our Maureen. What a lousy party. A load of giggling schoolgirls all asking me what kind of perfume I used. At least Valerie would appreciate the exhilarating freshness, the new experience in aftershave. I slapped some on my face. Ooh, smashing stuff this is. It certainly was a new experience. I looked in the mirror and what it did was make my pimples look healthy. After a few seconds the stinging stopped and I must say it was quite an exhilarating freshness. I just had my hair to do now and I'd be ready. Barry had a great hairstyle, a Tony Curtis. They were all the rage. He could only have had it like weekends though because our school the banned by the headmaster. Barry says that he's jealous because he's bald. He might be right. I don't know. It just seems to me that whenever you try to look smart or be a bit different, you're suddenly branded as a hooligan and everyone's telling you you're halfway to Borstal. Seems daft to me. I couldn't have a Tony Curtis anyway. My hair just won't go that way. Barry says it's because I've got a double crown. So I do it with a parting and a big quiff at the front. The trouble is, I keep getting a tuft of hair sticking up at the back. It's my double crown, I suppose. Barry never has that trouble. He's invented a special hair lotion. Sugar and water mixed and it makes his hair as stiff as a board. Hey, what time was it? I haven't been watching the time at all. I went to the top of the stairs. Hey, Mum, what time is it? Nah. I said, what time is it? Come down here. I don't know. My old mum, she's getting deaf in her old age. What's wrong? Are you going deaf? You what? I knew why she couldn't hear. She was running the tap in the kitchen. It's always the same when you're in a hurry. Look, Mum, all I wanted was the time. Oh, it's ten to seven. I could see that for myself now from the kitchen clock. What a fantastic clock as well. It's one of those like a frying pan that you hang on the wall and it has a smiling face painted on it and it had hung above the fireplace for as long as I could remember. My mum was very proud of it. She said it's never been a minute out since she's had it. Yep, ten to seven. It's dead right, that is. It's never been out since we've had it. Ten to seven. Better get a move on. I was supposed to be meeting Barry at seven o'clock down in town. We'd arranged to meet early. Ta-ra, Mum. Gotta go. I thought I'd go out without my mum saying anything, but that would have been too much to hope for. Just a minute. Oh, dear. Here we go. Uh, what, Mum? Tried to make it sound as if I had no idea what she wanted. Uh, what do you want? Where do you think you're going dressed like that? Oh, she started an argument now. I'd never get away. Dressed like what, Mum? Don't act the innocent with me, you know what I mean. No, I don't. I could see if I wasn't careful. I was going to be here for ages. Those tight trousers and that boot lace round your neck. She meant my Slim Jim. That's my Slim Jim. And why don't you get your hair cut? I knew it was best not to argue, but I couldn't stop myself. What's wrong with my hair? Mum was really getting into her stride now. Why don't you use the tie for a hair ribbon? And what's that smell? Have you been at my perfume? Don't be daft, it's my aftershave. Oh, I see. Well, when you're in court with all your other teddy boy friends, you don't come running to me. Oh, I'm off. Anna went before she could say anything, though I could hear her shouting after me. And be careful! I don't know. Me mum, me and me mum, we always seem to be squabbling these days. I didn't know whether to wait for a bus or start walking to the next stop. It's a penny cheaper from there. I decided to walk and of course when I was right between stops the bus went past. So I ended up walking all the way and I was about quarter of an hour late when I got to town and Barry was already waiting for me. Hey, where have you been? I've been standing here for quarter of an hour. It's freezing. Sorry Barry, I had a bit of a doodah with my mum. I could see Barry looking at my new trousers. Hey, are they your new pants? Yeah? What do you think? They're great, kiddo. Great. Barry had some new trousers as well, in the sort of bronzy colour. Yours are new and all, aren't they? Yeah, first time on. What are your bottoms? Sixteens. What are yours? Fifteens. <laughs> Barry was lucky. His mum and dad let him wear just what he wanted. I wanted fifteens, but mum wouldn't let me. As we weren't meeting Kath and Valerie outside the audience until a quarter to eight, we had about twenty minutes to kill, so we went for a coffee. It was a new coffee bar that had only been open a couple of weeks. I'd never been before, but Barry had. 
It was quite full inside, so Barry told me to look for somewhere to sit while he got the coffees. What do you want? Tea, please. I wasn't too fond of coffee. You can't have tea in a coffee bar. Of course you can. Oh, all right then. While I was looking around, I saw a couple of people I knew. One of them was a teacher at our school. Funny, you don't expect to see people like that in a coffee bar. I saw two seats on their own near the window and signalled Barry and he followed me over. Here's your tea. Ta. It was the funniest cuppa I'd ever had. Hey Barry, I, I asked for tea. It is tea. It's lemon tea. It's what you drink in coffee bars. Oh. We didn't take long over our drinks because it wasn't five quarter to eight and we were just going when Barry said he wanted to tell me something. Yeah, what is it? Just one thing, um, when we get inside the pictures, if, uh, if I start kissing Kath, you'll have to start kissing Valerie. You what? I thought he was kidding at first, but he looked very serious. You see, it's like that on a foursome. Well, what if she doesn't want to kiss me? Of course she will. You just follow me. You'll be all right. Here, have a peppermint. I must say, Barry was very confident. I didn't like the sound of it at all. I mean, I hardly knew her. Who would I know if she wanted to kiss me? Oh, heck. The town hall clock was just striking quarter two as we got to the audience, and I could see Kath waiting for us, but I couldn't see Valerie. Hey, Barry, mine hasn't turned up. Of course she has. She's probably inside getting some sweets. Kath saw us coming and came to meet us. I left all the talking to Barry. Hi Kath, where's Valerie here? Inside? She gave me a sort of funny look and I knew what was coming next. She'd probably gone and got chicken pox or mumps or something like that. She isn't here. It's her dad. Her dad? What's her dad got to do with it? This was too much for me. What's her dad got to do with it? He won't let her come. He says she can't go out with you because you're a teddy boy. Well, there we go. First four rays into romantic dating. Just got the one left after this. Um, so um, we'll have to start thinking about something else. Maybe you could drop us a line and let us know what you'd like to hear. Uh, and we'll see you next time for another story.